What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. It is Friday afternoon, finally, freaking Friday. I don't know about you, but I can't wait. We got Saturday where we can do a whole bunch of things, get ready for Sunday, and Sunday, of course, is fun day. We'll be watching the Washington Commanders versus the Eagles. And then come Monday night, Monday night football. Talk to my guys at the Italian Gourmet. We're getting the big sub. I don't know if anybody's coming. It may be that I got to eat a three-foot sub on my own. But regardless, I'm going to be making that, that mother humper. That, that mother humper sub. I think actually E2 Blue is going to be here. Thoughts and prayers to E2 who lost his grandmother. I believe the funeral was yesterday or today. Um, thoughts and prayers for him, definitely. So, the good news is Dak Prescott yesterday and today is actually back at practice. We, we talking about practice, not 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 the game, not the game that we love. We talking about practice. Um, he's not throwing the football. He's not throwing the football. This is to keep your legs, your body, your arms and stuff in shape and stuff. He still has the stitches in his thumb because they want to make sure that thing heals up completely. Although he is getting this weighted softball and stuff to keep his hand and stuff, uh, you know, in shape uh, until they're ready. Now, here's the thing I worry. And I don't know if Jerry Jones is a psychology major or whatever, but it seems like Jerry Jones has actually got himself an agenda here. One, of course, is to make more money. And at this point in, in his life, being the age that he is, the amount of money that he has, I don't know how much is enough. I, I Honestly, he's got more money than he could ever spend. I can't imagine anything that he wants to buy that he can't buy right now. He's got two helicopters. He's got the best practice facility in the NFL. He's got one of the greatest stadiums. He's got a 330-foot-long yacht. That's a football field long. I mean, how much more money does he really need? But what I feel like he is doing is, you know, by talking about how, hey, you know, that Cooper Rush, you know, we hope that there's a quarterback controversy. And in some regards, we all should hope there's a quarterback controversy. That Cooper Rush plays so good that we actually have two quarterbacks. You know, because ultimately, if you've got a guy who's really good, you can trade one of them and get something back that might help you down the road. The last thing you want is to have a guy who's just ass and can't play you want guys that can play at every position but i think and mike mccarthy went through today and said <laughs> you know there is there is no quarterback controversy Dak is our quarterback and so on but i think jerry's plan here is twofold one to to make sure that you believe that the team has hope and that that we're going to have a good season to keep you buying merchandise and keep you buying tickets to be there in the stands. And of course, those, those, those hot dogs and, and, and your beers and sodas and everything else and come there and tailgate. You know, he wants to make sure you, the fans, are in the stands that we haven't had any drop off because Dak Prescott's out. That's the first part of that because he is a modern day P.T. Barnum. There's a sucker born in every minute. But I think the real reason that Jerry Jones is doing what he's doing is to put pressure on Dak. And this is what actually worries me because as you're putting all this pressure on Dak Prescott, you know, one, you're saying that, hey, there could be a quarterback controversy or putting out there that he could be ready as soon as next week against the Washington Commanders. That what you're doing is, is you're putting the pressure on him to hurry up and get back out on the field. And that may not be the best thing because when you're a football player, there's nothing, and I mean nothing worse than being injured and not able to play. To see your teammates out there going to war and you can't be there to support them, it's, it's, it's terrible. Now, I, I, I can tell you this from my own personal standpoint because my senior year of high school, the last scrimmage we had the last scrimmage we had, I tear my ACL. And back then, you know, it wasn't it, it wasn't the same as now, where you go get an MRI immediately. For me, 
Being on that field, having my knee ripped out from underneath of me, being carried off on a stretcher on Friday, Monday, because the doctor said, well, we don't see any structural damage on the x-ray. Monday, I'm out there trying to work out to be ready to play, not knowing I, don't, I have a tore ACL. And the course of time between getting my knee operated on a week and a half later and missing four games and watching my team go one and three in that time, it killed me. It killed me because it's my senior year. My teammates are out there busting ass trying to win, watching them lose, and there's nothing I can do about it. So now you got Dak Prescott. Fortunately, they won the first one. But watching his team and his teammates, now it's been great that he's been on the sidelines because I dare say he was part of the game planning for, for, for Cooper Rush and part of the game play calling. And it might be that Dak Prescott is going to end up being a great coach. But be that as it may, Jerry Jones is putting pressure on him to get back out on that field maybe sooner than you want him to be there. And unfortunately, you're really playing with fire. It's one thing if it was his other shoulder. It's another thing if it's his calf muscle. But when you're talking about the thumb and the hand, that's a place that you don't want to risk having a setback. You want to make sure that that sucker is ready to let it rip for not only of setting him back and losing him on the field, but if he doesn't have full strength in there and he can't really let that thing rip, now you're actually talking about risking losing the games because he's physically not ready to play. And to me, that's scary. That's scary because when you're a football player, if you can get out of the bed, you're a warrior. You will do anything and everything out there to be there. You won't tell the coach, I'm not ready. At least back in my day, we'd literally get a concussion, see blue stars. And it's just like, I'm okay, coach, put me back in. And maybe that's why I'm screwed up in the head like I am now, because literally, that's what we used to do. And Dak Prescott is that kind of competitor that, you know, he'd probably go out there tomorrow and play with stitches in his hand because he'd want to be out there. But that's Jerry Jones. You know, Jerry Jones is always going to be uh, pushing the envelope and pushing players' buttons to try and do everything, of course, for them boys. I don't think he's going to be ready for Washington. I just don't. But Dak Prescott will do everything possible to be ready for that game. Well, I got to say, it is a beautiful beautiful day. There is literally not a cloud in the sky. And uh, there's a chill in the air. It, it, it feels like football weather right now. I think I'm going to need to go ahead and get some of my protein tanks filled up this weekend because I, I might need the heater outside for Monday night football. Hope you tune in tonight, 9 o'clock Eastern for our live stream. Uh, we'll be previewing the New York Giants and seeing if we can piss off Pizzle and Eagle, oh, excuse me, Eagles Nation. Uh, Giants Nation talking about Micah Parsons being LTS. And I'll see you soon.